Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's education session from the Broomfield Area Chamber. I'm Pat Monticelli. I'm the president and CEO of the Broomfield Chamber, and I am thrilled, thrilled to have with me today Kelsey Warren with Broomfield Public Health and Environment. That is a division uh, department within the city and county of Broomfield. Kelsey, thank you for being with me today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It's my honor to be able to give you this training and to speak with you all. And what we want to talk about today specifically is Narcan training. Um, we've all heard about the opioid epidemic, opioid abuse, um, and and Broomfield is no uh, is no exception to what's going on in in that uh, in that situation. So we wanted to have you over uh, uh, via Zoom to talk about opioid abuse, opioid addiction, and most specifically Narcan, what it is, the availability, and all those sorts of things. So I'm going to launch right in, Kelsey. Um, basically, why should businesses learn? about Narcan and how to use it. Yeah, and I'll go in between kind of talking and sharing my slides as well too, so you all have something to look at. Um, and I'm gonna begin with just sharing my first slide here. This is some data on overdose deaths in the state of Colorado. And what we're looking at is that top line there, that yellow line. Those are our opioid related overdose deaths that we've seen in Colorado in recent times. And what you can see is a steady incline of opioid related overdose deaths, but particularly in the last few years, more of a sharp incline, unfortunately, of overdose deaths due to opioids. And so this is something that's impacting us on a national level, on a state level, and also in Broomfield as well too. And what we're seeing is we used to have more sort of private in-home related overdose deaths, in which case majority of those overdose deaths we're seeing now are, are still in those settings, but we are seeing more public overdose related deaths as well too. And so it's important for our Broomfield business community to be prepared to know how to respond and how to identify an opioid related overdose death if it does happen in your place of business. And it's a skill to respond just like CPR or the Heimlich maneuver or any sort of first aid skill um, is being implemented similarly to respond to overdose deaths just because the prevalence is so high in recent times. We want you to be able to have those skills and to know how to identify and to respond and to ultimately help save a life. Absolutely. So I guess at, at its basic level, um, what is an opioid overdose? How do we know when we're seeing something like that? Yes. So I'm going to advance my screen here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so let's, let's look at, at opioids. So um, there's three sort of classes of opioids. We know that opioids are used to reduce pain. Um, we know uh, sort of the prescription class, those are things like Oxycontin, Vicodin, those are prescribed in medical settings. Fentanyl um, in the center here is also prescribed in medical settings, usually to treat severe pain, but the fentanyl related overdose deaths that we're seeing are more related to the illicit or illegal drug supply. Um, and that being sort of out of our control with quantities and potency, um, which is really driving majority of those opioid related deaths. And the last type of opioid is heroin. Um, and so these are sort of the three classes. There's a lot more opioids uh, than are on this current list here. Um, but this is sort of just what you need to know and what opioids are. And I'm gonna go back to that fentanyl slide. Sure. Um, this image here shows what happens sort of when our brain is on opioids and I'll kind of explain what happens with an overdose. What you'll see is on the left-hand side is our normal brain. So we have those gray receptors naturally occurring in our brains. And this happens with our endorphins and our dopamine reward system. So when we do a pleasure seeking activity, we have those um, endorphins binding to those opioid receptors in our brain and giving us those feel good euphoric sort of feelings naturally. On the right hand side, you see the red, those are the opioids, which is acting similarly to um, endorphins. Those are are coming into our brain, attaching to our receptors and giving those feelings of euphoria. On an overdose, what happens is we get uh, too much opioid in our brain and we get a flood of those red uh, opioids. And what happens is our, our brain, uh, the receptors, there's too much opioid and they become overwhelmed and the brain and the body neurologically begins to shut down. And then what follows after that is our organ functioning. So what we see in overdose 
opioid overdose specifically is uh, breathing slows down, heart rate slows down. Um, and so that's sort of the occurrence of opioid overdose. Um, and there are sort of increased risks that it can increase overdose. And I'll just briefly mention these, uh, using multiple substances, um, if you have a lower tolerance, of course, the quality of the substance, if you're using alone, um, your age and your physical health, the mode of administration, and if you've had a previous non-fatal overdose as well, too. So how do we recognize the signs of, of, yes. a, of an opioid overdose? Yes. So these are going to be the uh, main signs of an opioid overdose. Um, so the first is un being unconscious, so not responding, if you're shaking or yelling at the person. The other will be slow or no breathing at all, which can also uh, come in the form of making sounds, like a choking, gurgling, or snoring sound. And that happens because the lungs are gasping for air, and so that the person is going to be kind of struggling to breathe. Um, you'll also see sort of fading of color in their lips, uh, nails, skin. And then uh, generally if they're unconscious, you won't see their eyes, but if you do happen to see their eyes, tiny pupils is what we'll see. Those are the major signs. And one of the really important ones is that breathing. If a person's not breathing, then that's when we need to get the emergency help as soon as possible. So one of the, what we want to talk about today, in addition to, to opioid overdose, how to recognize it, um, how to recognize an overdose, is there is something available to help battle an opioid overdose, and that is Narcan. But a lot of people may not understand what Narcan is or how to use it, how to respond to an overdose using it. So can you tell us a little bit about, about what Narcan is and how it's used to respond to an overdose? Yes, I would love to. So here's a picture of Narcan. So it comes in a box and there's two doses there that are in the box. Um, Narcan is the brand name of naloxone. So naloxone is the medication that's been around for a very long time, used in many settings. And Narcan is just one of the brands that uh, is more, the more widely known brand. You can go pick it up in, the, in a retail store. Um, it's only effective for opioid overdose. So you can't use it for other substances like alcohol, methamphetamine, or stimulants like cocaine. Um, so just only for opioids. However, what's extremely important to know about naloxone and Narcan is that it's best practice to administer it even if you're not sure what is happening to the person, what substance they may be on. It is safe and effective. Um, so if you, if the person, if you uh, administered Narcan on someone and you weren't entirely sure maybe what they were overdosing from, it's still safe to administer it to them. There's not going to be any negative effects from you administering naloxone to them. Um, there's no sort of bad symptoms or signs. So if I were to administer Narcan to myself right now, um, as somebody who's not on any substances, I would have no negative effects, no harm done. So best practice to just use Narcan, even if you're unsure what substance it may be, or really what condition or what may be happening to them. So how does it work? Um, how does Narcan, you know, we, if we, if we find ourselves in a situation where we need to administer Narcan, um, what does it do to help combat the overdose? Yes. So uh, this slide will kind of show you the steps that you need to take to administer Narcan. And you can go and watch this video on your own time just to kind of see what that process looks like. Um, but first, you're going to check for responsiveness, right? So we, we don't need to administer Narcan on somebody who's still conscious. They may look high. For example, they may be kind of like nodding out. But if they're still conscious, then they're okay. So first thing is going to be checking for consciousness, yelling, shaking the person. If they're not conscious, then you're going to want to call 911 right away and get emergency medical services on their way. Uh, next, you're going to administer Narcan. And I forgot to bring my <laughs> box with me to show you how this works, but you'll open the box of Narcan. There's two doses in there and a nozzle uh, with a plunger. You're going to um, insert that nozzle with that plunger into the person's nose. They don't need to be breathing or in any sort of position. And you'll just press that plunger firmly and that'll administer the first 
dose of Narcan. So very easy, very simple, basically just a nasal, liquid nasal medication um, that you need to just pull out of that box and administer. Um, if the person is not breathing and you feel comfortable, giving them rescue breaths will be really important in this process, um, just because we know the damage that can happen when someone's not breathing. So that's just pinching the person's nose, giving them a full breath, watching their belly rise every five seconds. Um, and then lastly, we hope that that first dose of Narcan works and that person becomes conscious again and wakes up. However, if that's not the case, in two minutes after that first dose, you'll give the second dose of Narcan. Um, and then you would repeat that process. So every two minutes, you would give a dose until emergency medical services responds and comes to the scene and takes over. I want to go back a little bit, if we can, um, to, to talk specifically about fentanyl and things we need to know about fentanyl. You know, um, it seems for the longest time when we talk about opioids, we talked about heroin and we talked about um, oxy. Um, fentanyl seems to be on the rise. The misuse of fentanyl seems to be on the rise. Um, we've had some some high profile deaths, and as we've mentioned, you know, we've, we're seeing a sharp increase in them. So, what is it about fentanyl that we need to know and need to be aware of? Yes. I'm going to jump us back, sorry, a few slides, um, and I have our fentanyl facts sheet. And yes, Pat, just like you had mentioned, fentanyl is sort of one of those words we're seeing on the news. Um, it's, there's a lot of misinformation around uh, fentanyl, um, and so I want to be able to give you the facts around scientifically what is happening, what we know to be true, so you can be prepared and you can be educated to know what it is, how to respond, um, like I mentioned earlier, we do know that fentanyl is the sort of leading opioid that's causing overdose deaths. And the main reason behind that is because it's the, in the illicit drug supply, and that drug supply is not being monitored heavily. Um, and so uh, the people who are making illicit substances and illicit fentanyl, um, they are doing it in sort of quantities and amounts that are being unregulated. And so even sort of a tiny amount of it uh, could cause an overdose. And so it's something to be aware of, something to be extremely careful of as well, too. Um, but just some, some facts around fentanyl. Um, fentanyl is an opioid. Um, you cannot just overdose on fentanyl by touching it. It has to enter through a, a mucous membrane. Um, there's no risk from secondhand smoke to fentanyl. So if you were to walk into a bathroom after somebody smoked it, there's no risk for you to become high or overdose. Um, naloxone does work on fentanyl because it's an opioid, and uh, we haven't found fentanyl in um, cannabis or in vaping products. Um, I know that information has been spread around, but that's, we have not yet found uh, fentanyl in those products. Um, usually it's cut with other substances like cocaine, heroin, uh, methamphetamine, or illicit benzodiazepine. Um, so if someone were to order, order their substance, that's why it's, we should be careful about testing for it um, if it's something that we're not wanting to take. And then, of course, we know it is used to, trace, to treat more severe medical pain, um, but it's just because of this sort of illicit drug supply um, and getting it that way, that, that's why we're concerned about it. So what other important things should we know about opioid use in general and about Narcan? Yeah, so I'll kind of jump back to um, our Narcan slide here. Um, so Narcan works for about 30 to 90 minutes. So it's really important for that person then to go get emergency medical services and for them to take over. Um, it can cause some withdrawal symptoms. So when somebody, uh, after you have given them Narcan and when they become conscious, they're gonna be feeling probably not very well uh, because they're gonna be in a withdrawal state. So it's best to sort of give them space, explain to them what you just did, what happened. Um, you know, hey, I just gave you Narcan, you overdose, EMS is on the way, I'm sure you're feeling not great right now. Um, and just sort of giving them that space. Um, additionally, uh, Narcan uh, shouldn't be kept over 104 degrees Fahrenheit and also should not be frozen just because it's a liquid-based medication. The temperature, the high temperature at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, we're not as concerned about. For example, a lot of people wanna store Narcan in their glove box of their car and they're worried in the summer it might get overheated. However, 
it still has been effective beyond that temperature. So it, if it's best for you to have it in your glove box, it's okay for you to still have it in your glove box even in the summer. The shelf life of Narcan is three years. Um, however, it's been known just like other medications to be effective long after its expiration date. So I would still administer Narcan on a person if you have an expired box, that's completely fine. And there's research studies on how that is um, ethical. And then Narcan can be legally administered on and used by minors. And the last thing that I wanna share with you is this Good Samaritan law in Colorado. We have this law to encourage people to call 911 when there is an overdose. And this law, what it does is it protects you from being in that situation. So let's say I'm in an apartment, I'm with my friends and we're all using substances. And let's say I'm myself, I'm using substances. If I have a friend who is overdosing and the first I call 911 and the first responders show up to the, that apartment scene, I will not be criminally charged for um, possessing uh, substances. And the reason why that is, is because we want people to call 911 um, and a lot of people don't call 911 in these situations because they themselves don't want to get in trouble. But it's so important to call 911 because we need that further medical care um, and we need to intervene in these situations. Um, and additionally, this law also protects you if you're administering Narcan on someone in good faith and you don't, you didn't, you, you weren't sure what substance it was, maybe. Um, if you were administering it in good faith, even if you didn't know what substance it was, then you are also criminally protected too. So a lot of laws have sort of been created around this to enable people to seek help and to be able to administer naloxone. And, you know, one of the reasons that we're doing this, uh, this session today is because it's very important for the word about Narcan availability to get out to our local businesses. Um, so why is it important for businesses to know about Narcan and its availability and where can they get it? Yeah. So um, I will show you this slide here about where you can get Narcan in Broomfield. So we are very lucky we have two free distribution sites, uh, our Broomfield Library and our Broomfield Municipal, Municipal Courts. And you can just walk into those places and ask the staff there for a box of Narcan. You can get up to three boxes of Narcan there. Um, and they will give it to you, no questions asked, no ID necessary. Um, so you can go there and get Narcan for free. You can also pick it up at retail stores, so like Walmart, Walgreens, um, sometimes in the aisle, sometimes up at the pharmacy. Most insurance does cover the cost of Narcan. Um, generally, it starts at about $45 a box. Um, and then additionally, there's uh, some harm reduction organizations. We don't have one in Broomfield, but all of our surrounding counties do. And you're free to visit those for things like sterile syringes, um, any equipment for substance use, wound care supplies. And so any of our surrounding counties um, uh, have those programs that you can go and visit and seek those supplies. And then some of our community organizations also have Narcan for free as well too. Um, the Refuge Mental Health Partners in Broomfield has a kiosk that you can go pick some up from as well too. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to get some for your business, um, get some if you're an employee just to have on hand, get some for your friends and your family members, or if you're even going out to like a concert, restaurant, a bar, just so you have it available so you can intervene um, in this situation and you can be prepared and you can ultimately help save a life. That's great information. Uh, Kelsey, what have I not asked you already that, uh, that, you, that you'd like to let everybody know? <laughs> I think we pretty much covered it. I'll show you my email so you can um, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. If you want to do this training for your business, for your employees, I'd be happy to help come and train you all in that. Um, and I just want to thank you all so much for uh, being willing to learn about this information, uh, to prepare yourselves, and to help our Broomfield community become a place where we're intervening in these crisis times and we're ultimately saving lives. It's extremely meaningful to myself that you're a part of this um, and to the greater community as well too. And I want to thank also the Chamber of Commerce for being such a great partner for our behavioral health work in Broomfield. Um, and so thank you for supporting us in this effort. Um, it takes, definitely takes a village to do so. 
Well, Kelsey, thank you for your time today. Thank you to Burnfield Public Health for for all the work that you do as well. And uh, and I think we've uh, we've covered everything we can cover today. So again, if you need more information, uh, you can reach out to Kelsey Warren at Broomfield Public Health. You can also reach out to us here at info at broomfieldchamber.com. Until the next time, thanks everybody. Bye bye. Thank you.